CQ Parks on the air. CQ Parks on the air. November 4, Bravo. Kilo Charlie calling CQ. Kilo Charlie, see that's over for Alpha. Kilo Charlie Station. Sorry, I just had a diesel truck drive by and I missed it. <laughs> November 4, Bravo Kilo Charlie, park to park. November 4, Bravo Kilo Charlie, um, go ahead. Roger, I got you 5959 in the Georgia Golf Alpha, park number Kilo 2190. Kilo 2190, over. QSL, QSL, you're a 5 and 5, 5 and 5, the park Kilo 8157. Roger to 5-5, five, five. thank you very much, 7-3. Seven, 7-3, three. Seven, three. good luck on your activation. Thanks for hunting today. What's up, Internet? I'm out here at a state park here in Georgia, not far from the house, Magnolia Springs State Park, and I'm um, doing a little radio, a little, bit of, a little bit of radio fun. So I've been kind of posting up some questions in the members-only page on our BattleBox Facebook page. You know, if people would be interested in, in seeing some videos, maybe discussing, talking, learning, uh, sharing, uh, communications, and uh, got pretty good feedback. So here I am at a state park playing with my radio. When it comes to survival and prepping and, and the whole gamut of that stuff, uh, communications is a big deal especially in a grid down situation where you can't communicate through through telephone or watching the news, which usually that's kind of tailored to tell you whatever the heck they want to tell you, right? So having the knowledge to be able to set up communication gear and be able to use it's a big deal. And a lot of people are lacking in that. I, I saw that as a weak point in my preps several years ago, and I decided to uh, study up and, and, and get to understanding communications and I, and I went the ham radio route. Uh, radio in general obviously has been around for many 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 years and uh, it is a great way to communicate. It's a great way just to listen. Uh, you can pick up shortwave radio on, on frequencies with ease 
and uh, listen in. Um, not going to get on the soapbox here, but let's face it, when it comes to media these days, and when I mean media, I'm talking about not just social media, I'm talking about news, broadcast media. Um, a lot of that stuff is skewed, and a lot of that stuff is, is uh, tailored for what they want you to hear, right? Um, with shortwave radio, which you don't need a license to listen to, these just make it nice to, to be able to listen to it. You're going to hear a lot of non-biased shortwave broadcast of news throughout the world and from other countries and, and the whole nine. And, and then you can make decisions based on what you hear from there, right? And I think everybody that's in the camp of preparedness and survival and things like that need to uh, really sit down and think about communications. Do you have things in place for communications? Do you know how to use equipment for communication um, even if it's just listening right even if you're not licensed to to transmit on ham radio do you know how to set up a station to listen in you might want to think about it a lot of people are scared of the testing that's involved with ham radio look i rub sticks together to make fire okay uh it's not that hard to pass ham radio license testing. <laughs> you know, there's different levels. There's your technician level, which is kind of the, the base level, and then you have general, which gives you a few more privileges on the bands, and then extra level, which is the top level, which gives you a few more privileges on the bands as far as your bandwidth. In my opinion, general is probably the best bang for the buck. And when I mean for the buck, I mean for, for taking a test and, and passing it, it it's inexpensive it doesn't, doesn't cost hardly anything uh, some places you can actually do testing for free there's a few bands that a technician can transmit on um, that will get you all over the world just through uh, radio waves but not as many as general and and extra technician is going to get you to where you can talk on VHF and UHF which is very high frequency and ultra high frequencies uh, the extra level is, is a little more complicated, I'm not going to lie to you, but it, it's testing, right? It's just studying, taking practice tests to you figure things out and, and take a test and you're done. And then you, your license is good to, for 10 years. When that 10 years is up, you just renew it by paying, um, I forget what the cost is, but it's, it's minimal and you know you get another 10 years, you don't have to retest. I myself at the time uh, of this recording, I'm a general. I've uh, been doing it for a couple years now, so I am no freaking pro at this. Just like with everything else I share online, I do not claim to be a pro at anything. I like to learn, I like to practice, I like to study, and I like to be generally well prepared. So, are you guys interested in this sort of stuff? If you are, of course, you can put questions down in the comments and I can make videos to answer some of those questions. But uh, don't be scared of the whole ham radio licensing stuff. It's, like I said, I rub sticks together to make fire. Like, it's not that freaking hard. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, you don't have to have crazy equipment. And you don't have to have elaborate gear. You just need an antenna, a radio. It doesn't have to be a radio like this. It can be a radio that, that just has a VFO so that you can scan frequencies and a frequency counter so you know what frequency you're on. You don't have to have bells and whistles and this is by no means the most elaborate thing it's kind of middle ground right you need an antenna that you can uh, get tuned or be resonant on certain frequencies so that you can listen and transmit well it's a lot of fun it's a ton of fun you know you've got different levels you got and I'm kind of rambling but just for those that, that don't understand it right you got different levels of things right you can have a base station you can have a station at home with a permanent antenna system and you can use grid power or hook it up to a battery if the grid is down and use it there. You got portable operations, which is like what I'm doing here. I've came out here to this state park. I've got a little 20 amp hour battery, my radio and antenna, some coax, and you don't need the computer and all this. This is for logging and stuff like that. And what you may have saw in the clips, I was using using this right here that I hooked to my computer. You don't need the computer to use this. This is an antenna analyzer. It, confirms that I've got my antenna resonant at a certain frequency span and it's your SWR, your standing wave ratio. You want that 
at a very low level typically one to one is what you're shooting for and i was all over that so first try i actually got it i put sharpie marks on my antenna to help me dial that in quick but nonetheless antenna analyzer isn't something that you necessarily have to have anyway this one just happens to hook to my computer and i can see the screen bigger but it's got its own screen yada 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 and I'm not going into gear and all that stuff. If you guys are interested in this stuff at all, I'll be more than happy to start doing like more detailed videos on specific things in relationship to communications. This is just a, hey, I'm doing this, it's cool. I think you need to think about it and I'm gonna show you me playing around with it. And if you have interest, we'll go from there. But basics, antenna, radio, battery, and the cabling to connect the two. That, that's, that's, what, that's what you need. Um, but more so what you need is the knowledge to be able to do that. And by going through some study and testing for a ham radio license, you learn those things. And you have the ability to get out there and practice and transmit and have fun and communicate with people all over the world using ham radio, especially if you're general and above. Now, you got other forms of radio. You got GMRS, which also needs a license to transmit, but you don't have to take a test. You just pay a fee. I think it's like 35, 40 bucks. You get a GMRS license. You can run GMRS radio. So they have little radios, like base station type radios like this. The difference is in ham radio, you got a wide range of frequencies that you can use. In GMRS, they have frequencies much like CB radio, the frequencies are allocated into channels. I believe it's like 21 or 22 channels. Lower power, like this radio can run up to 100 watts of power. Uh, GMRS, I believe, can get you up to, uh, in some radios, up to 50 watts. Um, and then, you know, your little handheld HTs, uh, handy talkies, you know, they're typically five watts and below. You can only transmit on those allocated frequencies that are lumped into channels. This doesn't have channels. You scroll through frequencies. Uh, GMRS, you scroll through channels. And then your distance is limited. I can talk all over the world on this. GMRS, I've heard of some people getting uh, like out west where there's a lot of line of sight can be getting up to you know, 40 miles. Uh, there are some repeaters out there that are GMRS repeaters so that you can talk through the repeater. It will extend your range um, but there there's not a whole lot of those around in my area anyway I don't know of any and then you have FRS which is family radio that's your typically type deal you can go to Walmart buy an FRS two pack of little radios they're allocated to channels as well and they are the GMRS channels but they're definitely line of sight and you're I mean if you can get a mile or two with those you're doing something a lot of times if you're not elevated there's good in all of it. Uh, I'm not the type of ham radio operator out there that has issue with GMRS, has issue with FRS, it's radio. They all have their uses, they all have their benefits, okay? Ham radio, you can do a ton of stuff. There's a rabbit hole that you will never get out of in ham radio. There's digital modes, there's HF, there's moon bounce. You can talk through satellites and bounce off of satellites. You can, I mean, it's nuts, right? There's tons of things you can do. You can send packet information through data through the air. I mean, there's tons of communication options in ham radio. So many, you'll your your head will spin, right? But there's tons of things you can do with it. GMRS, you get a little bit better power. You're still a little bit limited in range. You're limited to frequencies via channels, and uh, but it's a little less serious and more lax. So think of FRS souped up a little bit. And then FRS, you know, the benefits of that is if you have a group of people and some of you are GMRS licensed, some of you are not, and, you know, you're traveling or you're doing something in a convoy or something like that, you can hand off the FRS radio to, to people that don't have a license and don't have a GMRS radio, and you can communicate that way. Um, so there's benefits in all of it. I'm not going to knock any of it. I'm not going to say ham radio is the only way to go. I prefer ham radio. And, uh, and also GMRS, uh, but ham radio over GMRS is something I'm interested in. So that being said, you got the camp of people saying, well, I know you can't transmit on it, but on a, you know, SHTF situation, you know, you can use it because it's an emergency, but okay, I hear you. However, do you know how to set this stuff up? 
Do you know how to properly tune an antenna? Do you know all the different, I mean, you can literally throw a wire up in one of these trees out here. You don't have to have a vertical antenna like this. You can throw up a, a random wire with a ballon or with an un, -un or, or stuff like that and talk on just a random wire thrown up in the trees. Do you know how to do that? Do you understand the lingo of ham radio? There's tons of avenues, right? There's tons of talking points on this. So again, if you're interested, we can start you know, shooting footage and talking about communications. I really think it's something that everybody should think about. I'm not telling you you need to go out and do it, but I'm telling you you might want to think about it. <laughs> so what am I doing here? So what I'm doing here is something that's pretty cool. It's called Parks on the Air or POTA for short, P-O-T-A. It's a fun way that ham radio operators can do, I don't know, in a layman's terms, call it a scavenger hunt, okay? So you got people like me that are in a park right now, set up portable with a portable station, and they call CQ. CQ is basically, hey, I'm here, does anybody hear me? Anybody wanna talk? And the people in the park are considered activators. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to get at least 10 contacts in the park to activate the park. And you can do it multiple times. I can come back here tomorrow and do the same thing. So there's this, this website, this POTA website, Parks on the Air website, where you can communicate with people. So there's people in other parks doing the same thing. So you can do a park to park, like I did a little bit earlier. You can uh, be hunted, right? So it's kind of like I said, scavenger hunt. So there's people that are not in parks that are considered hunters. They could be at home, they could be mobile in a vehicle, they could be somewhere else that's not a park that doesn't, so each park has a number. I'm at K2190 right now. So each park, state parks and national parks have a designated number. So I'm at K Kilo 2190. Somebody in, let's say New York, may be on their radio, they hear me calling CQ, they call to me. If I hear them, we make contact, I give them my park number, they put that in their log. And then I submit my log to the POTA website when I'm done, and it confirms, yes, this guy talked to this guy, or this girl talked to this guy, or whatever. It confirms making a contact, and you get points, and you get little awards and stuff like that. It's not a contest, but something you can do, and what it does is it helps get you out away from home, set up a portable station, and see where you can talk to. I've talked, I've talked to Europe, I've talked to California, I mean, I'm in Georgia, so I've called, talked to California, talked to Oregon, so coast to coast. I've talked to Puerto Rico, South America, uh, Sweden, Germany. I mean, talked all over the place on a portable station like this. So in a communication aspect, think about that. One, you can hear what's going on. You can hear what people are talking about. You may be able to hear information that you're not hearing anywhere else. Uh, of course, it's up to you to decide if it's true or not. There's different bands that, that can that can go further during certain times of days. I mean, it, it's, it's not complicated, but it can be complicated. Does that make sense? It's not hard to understand. It's just you got to understand what I'm talking about. And I don't know if we're there yet. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get some questions in, in the comment section, and we can explore further on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm sitting here at this park, Magnolia Springs Park here in Georgia. I've got my little iPad set up right here to create my log. I'll put in the uh, people's uh, call sign and we'll give each other a signal report. So a signal report is a couple numbers, right? So you might hear somebody, I gave the guy earlier a five nine. So one through five is the first number. That's how well I can make out what's being said. So five being the top. So if it's like he's sitting right beside me talking to me, I'll give him a five. If it sounds like he's way over there and I'm having to really work hard, you know, it might be a three, a two, or a one. The nine number is a one through nine, nine being the highest, and that is how far the meter moves of the received signal. So a five nine would be, I hear you very well, like you're sitting right beside me, and your meter reading is a nine. And it could be one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to nine depending on what the meter shows. After nine, it gets into the red, and it goes in increments of 10, like 10 over, 20 over, et cetera. So like a five, nine plus 10 would be, you're in the red, I had to turn the volume down, it's, it's ridiculous, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to activate this park um, once this tractor moves by. <laughs> I picked a, a picnic area right by the road, probably wasn't smart. 
So what I gotta do is I gotta find a frequency that's not in use. I'm gonna turn it around right here so you can see my I'm on 143280. Is this frequency in use? November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie. That's my call sign by the way, that's allocated to me when I pass my test. November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie is my call sign. Again, is this frequency in use? November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie. All right, CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ Poda, CQ Poda. CQ parks on the air. November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ parks on the air. So I'm gonna keep doing that until somebody hits me up, hopefully. CQ, 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 this is November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie, calling CQ, Parks on the Air. November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie, calling CQ. Kilo, Charlie 2, Echo, Echo, Sierra. Kilo, Charlie 2, Echo, Echo, Sierra. QSL, QSL, November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie. Kilo Charlie 2 Echo Echo Sierra in New York, you're beautiful 5-9 Roger. Roger 5-9 New York, I've got you 5-9 into Park Kilo 2190. Okay, thanks for 5-9 into the park there, thanks for being there sir, have fun. Kilo Charlie 2 Echo Echo Sierra, 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 Is frequencies in use. This is November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ Parks on the Air. CQ Parks on the Air, November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ. Whiskey 9 Alpha, Victor Mike. Whiskey 9 Alpha, Victor Mark. Tell your 5 9 in Wisconsin. My name is Jim. Roger, Jim. Name's Brandon. I appreciate it. You're five nine in the Georgia Park Kilo two one nine zero. QSL. Thanks for being there. Thank you very much. Seven three QRZ. So I got somebody else calling parts on the air on this frequency. CQ, 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 this is November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ, Parks on the Air, CQ, Parks on the Air, November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie calling CQ. Oscar. Oscar Station. Go ahead, Oscar Station. Kilowatt Zero November Oscar, I've got you a 5858 into Park Kilo 2190, 2190. Yeah, QSL, no problem there. I'll give you a 5959 into Iowa, 59 into Iowa, over. Thanks for the 59 Iowa, appreciate it. 7 3. 7 3 and uh, take care. You too. This is November 4, Bravo, Kilo, Charlie, Parks on the Air. Whiskey Zero, November, Kilowatt America. Whiskey Zero, November, Kilowatt America. Roger, your 5-6, Minnesota. Roger, the 5-6. I've got you 5-7, five, 5-7 seven, five, seven into Kilo 2190. 7-3. QRZ. Uh, Whiskey Victor Bravo Station. I can't quite pull you out of the noise. Uh, I want to try again in a few minutes. I'm sorry. Uh, awful noisy here. So I've got five contacts right now. So I need five more and the park has been activated. And I'll get a credit for activating a park. Kilo Zero Alpha India Foxtrot. 
Uh, Foxtrot station. Kilo Zero Alpha India Foxtrot. Kilo Zero Alpha India Foxtrot. QSL. QSL, QSL. Roger, Roger. I got you 59, 59 into Kilo 2190. I'll take that 59. You also are 59 into Mike November. Gotcha, Minnesota. Thank you. Got it, Minnesota. 7 3. Thanks for hunting. So far, we got Indiana, Minnesota, Indiana, Wisconsin, New York, and South Dakota. Pretty cool. CQ Parks on the air. CQ Parks on the air. November 4, Bravo. Kilo Charlie calling CQ. Kilo Charlie, that's over on Blue Alpha. Kilo Charlie Station. Sorry, I just had a diesel truck drive by and I missed it. <laughs> Kilo Charlie 2 Echo Bravo Alpha. Kilo Charlie 2 Echo Bravo Alpha. QSL. QSL, you're about a 5-7 Albany, New York. What's your call, please? Roger to 5-7. Call is November 4 Bravo Kilo Charlie. November 4 Bravo Kilo Charlie. I've got you at 5-9. Yes, sir. 5-7 Albany, New York. Uh, QSL. QSL's 57 New York. I do appreciate it. Okay, 73. Uh, uh, November 4, Bravo Kilo Charlie. Uh, Kilo Charlie, Choco Bravo Alpha, 73 and clear. 73. Thank you very much. Need one more. CQ, CQ, CQ. This is November 4, Bravo Kilo Charlie calling CQ Parks on the Air. November 5, Whiskey Charlie. November 5, Whiskey Charlie, QSL. QSL, you 55 in Texas, over. 55 Texas, I got you 59 into Kilo 2190, and you're number 10. All right, so yeah, we got uh, we got 18, 18 contacts. Um, I don't know, I, I forgot to check what time I started. This has been 30 minutes or so, maybe. I mean, with just a portable vertical antenna, this radio and a battery. I got 18 contacts, one was in Spain, so from Georgia to Spain. What we got here, we got South Dakota a few times, Kansas, New Hampshire, Louisiana, Connecticut, Indiana, Vermont, Texas, Oklahoma, New York, Indiana, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Here's a, here's a shot of, so there's, the station in Spain I talked to. So it also kind of is cool with this map here um, with this logging software. This logging software is Hammers, H-A-M-R-S. You can kind of see where your signal's going and where you're receiving signals. And there's other modes and things that you can do to test your signal direction and you know, your hearing direction, your transmitting direction and the, the strength and all that. But it's a really cool hobby. And, and I mean, that, that's what it is. Ham radio is a hobby, but it has a lot of practical uses for survival and prepping and, and things like that. So yeah, and, and we could go, like I said earlier, there's, there's a giant rabbit hole that you can jump in when it comes to communication. Not just ham radio, also GMRS radio, right? You got uh, tons of different avenues of communication, you know, things to do and practice. But I, I really do urge you to step back and look at your preps and see, ask yourself is, do I need to work on my communication skill set? And if that's true, and you do, look into, look into ham radio. Um, the testing is not hard, folks. Like I said earlier, I rub sticks together to make fire. Like, if I can do it, you certainly can do it. Um, and uh, at least, in, in my opinion, at least try to shoot for, for getting a general license. There's a lot you can do with a technician's license, which is the, the first level of, of licensing. And it's not that hard, folks. Don't be scared of it. If you're in the camp of, well, I'm not going to get licensed, I'm just going to have the stuff and I'll use it if I ever need it. Eh, you're probably not going to know how to use it properly. You might. Many people, many people are different. You, you might. Um, but I urge you to get the license. I urge you to, you know, get out and actually play with this stuff and learn how to use it and make contacts. You, you, 
it, it's really cool how with just a freaking portable antenna five minutes of setting up you you can sit down at home or at a park like i am now and talk to people all over the world and it's not all just doing like what i just did here like you can actually have conversations with people um and make new friends and and get on what they call nets which is a bunch of people and you just have kind of a big round table discussion and you you learn a lot you meet a lot of new people for the most part people are really good nice people um in ham radio for the most part it's just like anything else there's people that are freaking complete buttholes and <laughs> probably shouldn't be on there but they're they're there but it's not the majority and you can just go to another frequency and you know not not deal with with the grumpy the grumpy hams <laughs> some people call them sad hams so just a quick kind of overview of what i got going on here so this radio here this here's just a icom ic7300 hf radio you don't have to go this route. I mean, there's way cheaper options that talk just as good, if not better than this in, in some aspects. This is just what, what I have, or one of the radios I have. I have another one that's a 7100 that does the same thing this does. It just doesn't have this fancy screen with the scope and everything, which you don't need. You don't need that. That's just, you know, icing on the cake. I got, I got this 20 amp hour battery. I got this off of uh, Amazon, pretty cheap. It's a really light. 12 volt battery, lithium iron phosphate, works great. I have not yet ran this down and I've had, I've, I've talked on this at the house well into eight hours, I'm sure. But I, I'm gonna do some testing on battery stuff uh, for the channel here soon. But this radio, this battery, and you can just plug the radio directly into this, but I've got a um, power pole connector here so I you know, can connect other stuff if I have other stuff. And then freaking coax going out to my antenna. Um, this is my logging stuff. You don't need that. You can use pen and paper. Um, antenna analyzer. You don't need this, but it's nice because you can test your antenna resonance and lengthen or shorten your antenna or move your radials around or do whatever you got to do to get your antenna dialed in. You don't need it. Most radios have a SWR meter on it. It just this makes life simpler so this is just something you can do over time once you once you get you know accustomed to doing radio stuff and then i just got a i think this is a 25 foot coax this antenna is a wolf river coil that a friend of mine gave me when i got into ham radio a couple years ago and this can do i've done some six meters all the way up to 80 meters with this um I got this 213 inch steel whip and like I've gone on here and I've marked, so that's 20 C. So this antenna is actually resonant on 20 meters without the coil. So I could just put the antenna directly on the base and not use this. But I've got this all the way up at the top where it goes straight into that one wire so it's not using the coil. And I got it marked here. 20C so when I have the coil on it I know to put it here and it's going to get me really close to where I want to be in my SWR for my frequency um, but you can just lengthen or shorten this antenna here to get resonant on whatever band and frequencies you want to be on and then I've got uh, three sets of five each wires clamped onto the legs these are these are my ground radials some some call them counterpoise and not really counterpoise or they're radials and so that's hooked to this the legs which is your negative of your if you will of your antenna and basically all this does is these these uh 15 wires here they're two and a half meters long it just creates a ground plane for your signal to kind of act against. Like, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? I'm trying to do this in terms that not only I understand, but people that don't know anything about this stuff understand. So think of it as the reflector. Think of it as creating a point to help bounce that signal out. So your electrons flowing through your antenna 
have something to kind of bounce off of to reflect off of so that's what these wires here are and it's just 15 two and a half meter uh long and uh wires there's just 14 gauge wire i bought at home depot cut them two meter two and a half meters each stuck them into those clamps clamp them onto the legs and that's my ground radial field um but like i said earlier i mean you can just take a wire a length of wire and a sandbag throw a piece of paracord up over that tree right there over a branch pull a wire up in a tree put coax to it do the same thing there's tons of things we can talk about when it comes to communications different types of ways to set up different types of antennas all that sort of stuff we can completely geek out on it or we can just have fun with it which is what i prefer to do like i'm sure many of y'all that watch my channel understand that i like to have fun doing stuff and learning things be it starting a fire or putting up a freaking tarp tent or you know trying out gear new gear i like to have fun with it not be so serious about it there'll be a time where you need to be serious about it but at least you learned it by having fun right so that's my angle on it so anyway appreciate you guys watching if you like this content if you if you want me to do more uh communication related stuff if you want me to talk about you know ham radio more if you want me to talk about gmrs if you want me to talk about frs if you want me to talk about digital modes if you whatever um again i'm not a pro at any of it but i do play around in it um enough to know enough to hopefully inspire you to do the same and it's just cool getting to go out to a park or just do this in your front yard you know and talk to people and and learn how to how to use this type of equipment in case of an event where uh this is how you want to have to communicate or this is how you're going to have to get your information so just food for thought folks so as always i appreciate you guys watching if you want to see more of this content if you got any questions or anything like that throw it down in the comments below um and i'll look at it and you know maybe uh respond to the video or something love you mean it thanks for watching be sure to like comment share with your friends hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber all that fun jazz and i'm gonna get back on here and uh play around on i think i'm gonna try to go to 40 meters and play around there so see y'all on the next video yeehaw mm -hmm.